This has been a fun year for me as somebody who's been covering PlayStation and Xbox from the perspective of looking at it from the industry. It's been a lot of fun. I mean, last year I sounded like an idiot. I sounded like I was crazy when I said exclusivity was going to start fading away that a lot of these third-party publishers were going to probably go ahead and put that thing away. I sounded crazy when I said we were going to be seeing some PlayStation published games show up day one on PC. I sounded crazy when I even said that we're probably going to see Spider-Man come to Xbox. I still sound crazy for that one. But by and large, the whole conversation with Game Pass was one of my biggest focuses, and I got dragged a lot for that. I had people say all kinds of things about Game Pass, and I think for the most part, what we've seen is a lot of the dissenters towards Xbox are people that are from the PlayStation side. I've seen some from Xbox's side, don't get me wrong. I've seen some people who are even on the PC side rag on Game Pass. They don't like it. However, the one thing that can be denied is that Game Pass is actually a brutal force in the gaming industry. And the one thing a lot of people don't necessarily pay attention to is that Game Pass is actually a marketing, you know, setup, marketing platform for developers. You see, the one thing you didn't really notice, nor did many people pay attention to, was that the fact that once your game is on a public platform, one more public platform gives it exposure. That exposure is what you need. Even Call of Duty, the biggest selling game of the year, has actually benefited from this. Shout out to Hazard or Gaming Dragon of Dojima, the Twitter account that actually put this article up here. And I pretty much clicked the link and it took me to the BBC's website. And it says, Call of Duty's director says Game Pass debut gives players new way in. They're citing a Treyarch developer who pretty much came out and gave a statement, which I thought was actually very interesting. So let's go ahead and read what Miles says. The developer's name is Miles, and they said, what we've seen, and this is about Game Pass, is it's allowed people that might have been on the fence, might have had some of that friction, might have been like, I haven't played in a while, to actually come back and try the game. He tells Newsbeat. The latest release, this is Newsbeat's writing, also leans into nostalgia with tweaks to Zombies, one of Call of Duty's most beloved modes, and an update of fan-favorite multiplayer map, Nuketown. Miles also writes, We've gotten to the point now where Black Ops and Call of Duty have been around so long, I've been working on it for 16 years. And really the challenge for us is how do you bring along the fans that love Call of Duty, but how do you create an environment where you can welcome new fans in? When you look at Game Pass, the exposure is so healthy for developers that the moment a player is looking at the platform and they, you know, try out the game and they like the game, they're for the most part going to do one of two things. They're going to either continue playing the game and beat the game. That's the first thing that they're more than likely going to do, or they're going to buy the game. This has been the biggest weapon that Game Pass is that a lot of other, you know, people have downplayed. PlayStation Plus does the same thing too. The difference nonetheless with PlayStation Plus is it, you keep the game as long as your subscription stays on, which is fine. But if somebody loses a subscription or maybe they don't subscribe or maybe they, you know, they're not in a position where they want to subscribe and they were already playing the game, the idea with the subscription services, they present a twofold aspect where even though the game is on PlayStation in its subscription service or Xbox subscription service, you can still go back and buy the game to continue playing. You can even choose to buy the game on your favorite platform, which still benefits the developer. The big example for me this year was Sifu. Sifu basically finally left the holds of X Epic Games' exclusivity and the holds of, you know, PlayStation's exclusivity and came straight to Game Pass. This is where I first played it. Once I touched the controls, I was like, yo, this is my jam. You know what I did? I didn't play any much longer in, on the Xbox platform. I went straight and I bought the game on Steam. Yeah, I'm, I'm fired of Mortal Kombat, ready to play once I'm done making this video. I played a little bit of it on here as well, too, and I was like, this is actually a cool game. I'll be happy to come back to it, but Mortal Kombat has got my attention, guys. It, there are people making me salty on here. I got to go back and punch people back, man. All these gimmicks that they do on this game is quite annoying, but that's a whole different conversation for a different day. I think the underestimation of this Game Pass thing has just basically flown over a lot of people's heads. And some people never bother to check out the ecosystem or even just take a look at it to see that there's a buy button right beside your install button. In some cases, you have a cloud play button. And all of these are available for any developer 
that wants to come in and leverage it. And Call of Duty has benefited from it. And those who've been saying things like, oh, Game Pass's numbers haven't even really grown and all of the above, I think you're, in a sense, still living in some anti you know, antiquated world that you yourself are watching the entire gaming industry change in front of you, but you want to hold on to your self-belief. I don't know. Maybe there's an innate need for some people to want Xbox to fail or for some people to maybe be in a position where they left Xbox and they're seeing Xbox has pretty much moved far into the, you know, the whole gaming scene and is now a dominant force and they can't get themselves to actually think past that whole thing that they've done. That Xbox is bad or Xbox sucked 10 years ago when they probably were Xbox fans, got upset, moved to PlayStation and can't necessarily see anything better in this regard. But this is really interesting to see. This is not surprising for anybody who was taking the objective look. I couldn't be bothered anyways, right? But at the end of the day, this actually makes a whole lot of difference now in the conversation. What are people going to say now about Xbox? What are they going to be talking about? Are they going to take the premise that Xbox is in a position where, you know, Game Pass is doing ABC when Game Pass, we know its numbers. We know exactly what Game Pass is capable of doing. We know exactly how much, or at least an estimate of how much is spent on Game Pass. Phil Spencer mentioned it, over a billion dollars. We know approximately how many subscribers are on Game Pass, which we know are over 34 million at this point. And we can do the conversation and the calculations and see that, it, you know, exactly, you know, how that stays profitable as long as their margins make sense. And a game like Call of Duty, apparently it makes sense to still put it on Game Pass because PlayStation is going to make up for the purchases and Steam are also going to make up for the purchases and the game can stay sustainable even with the Xbox players who prefer to buy the game on their own. The Game Pass is just the icing on the cake. And what that has probably done is it's converted more sales for Xbox. Wow. Who would have known that the trillion dollar company knows how to make money? <laughs> I just don't know what to say, man. For those who maybe, you know, you've always been a detractor, it's okay. Maybe someday Xbox might meet your, uh, you know, standard of what you think Game Pass should look like, I guess. But the reality is, I think they've already met their internal metrics. And y'all that thought the subscription service was going anywhere, it's not going anywhere so so quickly. It's <laughs> I think it's going to stay here for a little bit. So, you know, either get your subscription or uh, whatever it is you want to do, go ahead and do. Thanks for watching the video. Talk to you guys in another one. Peace out.